This is a vintage squirt soda advertising tin piece. It would hang in a store or at a gas station. It's got some rust and some wear. It's got a built-in thermometer, which I don't think is entirely accurate because it's definitely cold out here and this is reading about 68 degrees. And yeah, just overall pretty beat up. Um, the auction that I go to pretty frequently had a bunch of tin advertising signs, including some Dr. Big Dr. Pepper pieces and Coca-Cola. And they all went for way more than I was willing to pay. And this one here was on a tray lot with a handful of other pieces. I honestly cannot remember what I paid for, but usually on the tray lots they go pretty cheap. People don't really see the stuff that's on there. So I want to say I probably paid about 20 bucks for the tray. And this piece here I sold for $122.95. I think I had it on best offer, but I'm not sure. The person did pay full price. So this piece is pretty cool. This is an antique kind of cruel or needlepoint map of Long Island. It's very, very folksy. You can see it's spelled Long Island. But it's obviously this is Long Island. It's got all these great little things along the way, a little zeppelin up there, a lighthouse over here. Not really sure the date on this, there's no indication of when it was made, but I'm guessing probably the 20s to 40s. Really don't know, but it seems like it has some genuine age to it. And the frame is pretty old, the back of the frame is pretty cruddy, and just really interesting. These There was two of these that came up at auction. There was another one for Cape Cod, which I have up still, and very similar. The other one's a little bit smaller. This one here is huge. It's 28 by 19. It's got a glass front. Shipping this is not going to be fun. And I paid $15, I believe, each for them. So I was in it for 30. And this is the first one that sold. I had it up for $250 and I took a best offer of $215. This is an antique Copeland Spode teacup. I have it all wrapped up like this. This is how I store them so they don't get broken. But I have another one here that is under so I'll show you this one. This is a design called Chinese Rose. And I've featured some other pieces from this set. I bought this set, I think, for around $30 at auction. A bunch of dinner plates, salad plates, bowls, these teacups. I put the teacups up individually, and this is the first one that sold. And it's not the most desirable pattern, but people are always looking to fill out their collection if they have a broken teacup, or sometimes people just collect different individual teacups and saucers. So I put this up for $20, and somebody bought it. And I think I only had one of these up. I don't know why I didn't have the whole quantity up. That was my mistake. And so I'll have to relist these. And this one here is going off to Germany, or at least the one that's wrapped up here is going off to Germany. So I'm going to have to be extra careful with the packing on this one. This is a large 13 and 3 quarters inch oval platter. It's by Wedgwood. See the mark down there? And it's a very desirable pattern. This is called Florentine Turquoise. And it also has the fruit medallion. <clears throat> and just a great pattern. I really love this. It's got these uh, griffins or dragons and just kind of strange creatures all over it. And a uh, very, very elegant type of... Uh, dinnerware and this came in a large set that I bought at auction. I think I paid around $200 for it and I have a whole bunch more dinner um, settings, teacups, salad plates, a whole bunch of stuff. It wasn't a complete set. There's some pieces that are missing but I am going to be selling more of this and I typically get about $100 to $150 per place setting. So it has pretty good resale value. This piece here I sold for $109. This is the third and final NBC Olympics logo patch. It's a kind of a large patch. Brand new condition. I'm not sure if this is the vintage NBC logo or what this is, when these date from, but I bought these at an auction. It was a large tray lot of Olympic patches. Most of them were vintage from between 1976 to maybe the late 90s or so. And I've been selling them ever since. I still have a lot of them up. They're not the most exciting things to list for me. Not a lot of money in most of them. A lot of them sold for between six and 10 bucks. This one here sold for $15. So another piece of vintage Drew Holland, cast iron on, or enamel on cast iron sold. 
featured quite a few of these now in my last few videos. And I'm down to, this is my second to last one. I've got one more saucepan. I'm not sure what the price is on that, but I saw it on the shelf when I was upstairs picking the inventory. This here is just a 12 inch oval kind of casserole. And it's sold for $20. This is a Desert Eagle uh, lightning pin. It's metal with enamel, there it goes. And this came in a military lot that I bought uh, a couple years ago at an estate sale. I paid $50 for a large box of pins and ribbons and other military related pieces. And this was in there. Kind of thing that I guess you might put on, you know, a motorcycle vest or something. I don't think this is an official military pin in any way, but it's kind of a curious piece. And this here I've had up for a couple years now and it sold for 12 bucks. So this is my last piece of Drew Holland enamel on cast iron. This is a saucepan. This is probably the nicest piece out of that box lot that I got. This one's in flawless condition. It's the largest piece as well. The lid's in perfect condition as well. So this piece here I put up for $40 and it's sold. And that's the last of it. I don't have any more of this left. This is a nice antique yellowware cream pan or cream bowl. It's about 14 inches across and about three and a half inches deep. It's got a great shape to it. I had this in my house on display in the pantry for a while because I, I tend to enjoy yellowware and I have a few pieces I've kept. This piece I wasn't terribly fond of. It also has a little bit of a, a small chip right in the rim there. So that kind of lowers its value a little bit. Got this at auction along with probably three or four other yellowware pieces. It was all in the same lot. I think I probably paid five or ten bucks. It was one of those nights that Nobody was buying anything and none of the big buyers were there, so I got a lot of stuff really cheap. This piece here I put up for, I think I had it for $90. If it wasn't chipped, I could probably get about $150 for it. And I took a best offer of $75. So this is an antique hand-tooled, hand-painted, leather Egyptian uh, photo scrapbook type album. It's got all these great, great uh, kind of pressed... Egyptian motifs on it and the front has the same motif, but it's been painted and Inside it's completely unused and has Kind of this thicker paper with a little parchment in between and this I got at an auction Big lot of things. I had so, there was some lap desks in there, which I've sold in previous videos I think I sold those for between 40 and 60 dollars. I think I paid about five bucks for this lot It was a bunch of stuff that just nobody wanted that night and this piece here I put up for $65 and I took a best offer of $35. And my best guess is that this is probably from around the early 1900s, probably around the time that kind of the Egyptian craze struck when they discovered King Tut's tomb and all that and kind of the United States and the rest of the world kind of went crazy with Egyptian stuff. I don't know for sure, but uh, I do know it is definitely somewhat antique. So I don't normally ship on Saturdays, but today is, well, this Saturday is the week basically before Christmas, and I got a few orders that came in late last night and early this morning. I just want to ship these out, so quick video to get these out. First thing is this enamel on brass copper oriental plate, and this just one I, piece of plate, kind of like cloisonne, but I don't think this one really is cloisonne. But I got this in a lot with a bunch of cloisonne that I paid, I forget maybe 20 bucks for. Sold a bunch of those pieces already. I've featured them in my other videos. This piece is kind of interesting, but not very nice. It's got kind of this weird scalloped edge. It's obvious China export. And this one went up for, sold for $11. And it took the person about two weeks before they paid for it. It's been so busy, I forgot to open an unpaid item case. Next up is this medal, just a uh, kind of a military medal for Efficiency, honor, fidelity, for good conduct, says. Still on the cardboard, it's got the ribbon bar. It's got a bunch of these in a military lot that I bought for 50 bucks at an estate sale. I've been selling that for years now. This piece here sold for $10. And these last things are a couple of rollers for a antique six inch letterpress printing thingy majig. Got these in a box of letterpress stuff that I bought at auction for maybe 20 bucks. I've sold a bunch of things from that, including a real, some really nice 
copper on wood engraving blocks, which sold for some really good money. These here, very specific. I just measured them and measured the, the bearings on the side, put them up, got a lot of questions, but no offers. Had them up for $60 and finally took a best offer of 35 bucks on them. This is an amateur painting. I just called it Man with Blue Hat. It's got the name on the back and the name of the artist and the year it was made, 1995. I don't think this is a listed artist. This is probably just a college artist, but it's a pretty nice piece. And I found this in the basement of my mom's apartment house that she was selling and we were cleaning out. And I took a bunch of stuff from her that she was just going to throw away. And this piece here I put up for $50 and took a best offer of 40. These are a couple of vintage 1977 Star Wars Burger King commemorative glasses. This one here is the Darth Vader glass. And this one here is the R2-D2 C-3PO glass. And these are pretty common. They're out there. Usually I think there's a total of four or five in the collection. And people will kind of seek them out. I've had these up for probably a year now. And these just sold on Bonanza for $28.95. And I think I got these for next to nothing. I remember I got these out of a lady's car. She was at one of those kind of drive-in type tag sales that they set up in the parking lot. And it was raining and she didn't want to put her stuff out. She just said, go through her car. And I found tons and tons of stuff. I had a great time. And I think I paid about 10 bucks for about two or three boxes full of stuff. And that was about two to three years ago. Uh, I'm not going to take the wrapping off because I'm going to pack these, but they look nicer without the wrapping. This is an Amish country signed print. I don't think it's an original signature, but it's by an artist called J.A. Warner, who did a lot of photos of kind of the Amish country. So these are genuine Amish people here in a little uh, course and carriage ride through the snow. Picked up a bunch of these. I have a whole portfolio of these in here. Paid about two or five bucks. I can't remember. It was a walk around auction. So I did not pay a lot for this. And some of them are interesting. Some of them are kind of vague. And they're all by the same artist. And I just, I think this might be the only one I listed up so far. I just didn't get very far with these. I bought them last summer. And this one here sold for $22.95. So now that one's sold, I'm kind of eager to get the rest of these listed.